this Florida Derby Day, remember to sign up with DRF Bets. Dan Ullman, Mike Buer, race number 12 at Gulfstream Park on Florida Derby Saturday is your Kentucky Oaks prep at Gulfstream. It is the grade two Gulfstream Park Oaks. Let's throw up the field. Three-year-old Phillies going a mile and a 16th. Mala Thot is going to pass this race. She would have been the favorite for Todd Pletcher. She's going to run in the Ashland at Keeneland. She's out. And while you might poo-poo a field of seven, this is a very competitive group. It is. Um, a, a lot of Phillies in here, Dan, with, uh, with something to prove, however, and, and a few of them looking for some redemption off of some disappointing recent efforts here. Um, I thought no, sh not showing up opens things uh, up for anybody else. Interesting pace projector as we throw up the time form U.S. pace projector. Colima, who's done most of the damage in her career on turf, she's a fast horse, and she should be able to make the lead, breaking from this advantageous inside post position. The six mil fui just did not have a great trip, and we'll talk about that more in the Devona Dale last time out. If she works out the kind of trip she did in the Demoiselle, she could be dangerous. Something tells me, though, that the two Bow Bow girls not going to be last early. Uh, yeah, we'll see where that uh, Philly winds up. And I agree with you, though, that Milfui feels like she could fall into a right trip here. Um, and if she gets a better one than she got last time, it could be rebound time. Kona Lima is a graded stakes winner on turf, thanks to a disqualification call in the grade three. Here comes the bride. But she's been very solid for Todd on the turf this winter at Gulfstream, and she's done some okay things on dirt. Let's go back to her most recent dirt start. You have to go back to September of her two-year-old uh, year. This is an off-the-turf race. The hour deer peg going seven-eighths of a mile. She's the beaten favorite in here, but she caught a wet track. She's a better horse on the turf, but with her speed, she has a little bit of an advantage. Uh, I think she's going to have to run a lot better. I think she will drift off the three to one morning line, but that's light. Uh, no, I agree with you, Dan. Um, and we'll see if she makes the lead in here. I guess that gives her a chance. I mean, she's she's won on dirt before, and she's certainly run fine on it. I agree with you. It feels like she is a better turf horse. Um, her dirt races are, are okay. I would also worry a little bit about her stretching out on the main track. I don't know how that's going to work out for her. Bow Bow Girl, the number two, took advantage of a really nice ride and race flow uh, from Corey Lannery in this maiden race we're going to show you on February the 21st. There was no speed in here. They broke from the rail going a mile and a 16th. They backed that pace down to 49. Corey then won it on the turn, opening up with Bow Bow Girl. She's going to hold sway. Not sure what she beat in this field, but she is going the right way. And she's catching a Gulfstream Park Oaks that is kind of lacking a superstar. Yeah, that, those things are all true. I thought that made her the most interesting longer price in the race, Dan. She obviously has to improve again, uh, but she ran pretty well last time. Crazy beautiful in some ways is the horse to beat. She's certainly the most accomplished horse on the way in. She's grade one place. She ran in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies. Now, she was one of the horses that just didn't fire in that weird Devona Dale where whole Bodemeister won at a zillion to one. She did finish ahead of three of these common foes, however, and a horse that finished sixth in that race did bounce back to run second in the subsequent start with a 77 buyer. If you just want to say Crazy Beautiful was a short horse that day, they're gearing up for the Kentucky Oaks, and she should do better second off the layoff. She's a very logical threat. No, I agree with all that stuff. I sort of understand why she's the morning line favorite, whether or not she goes favorite or not um, in this race. We'll see. You know, all in all, Dan, she ran fine in the Devona Dale last time. The problem is she didn't really have the excuse that maybe some of the other horses had in there. I mean, the trip all in all worked out in there. She was clear in the stretch, and she never really threatened. Penn Street, the number four, was wide in the Devona Dale. She was also 84 to one that day, and her only lifetime win came going six furlongs. She's a little bit slow on paper, but she's progressive. This will be her fourth lifetime start. Right. Very lightly raced. Could certainly take another step forward in here, which she will have to do. She was wide last time in the Devona Dale, but she couldn't get into it. Lenlo Lady needed a drop to the $50,000 maiden claiming ranks to not sure one and only victory, but she won that race by a mile. And then she came back in this start. I have to admit, I was a little disappointed. Let's watch the one turn mile effort where she looms large on the outside in the stretch. And she just kind of lacks the needed kick, Mike. The buyers are going the right way. She's taken a step forward in her last four starts. And I think distance will actually be okay for her. Um, again, she's not catching the greatest field in the world. 
she's taking a step forward with each and every start, and she'll be a price for Romans. True enough. I mean, you know, just the fact that um, the shorter prices in here um, are horses that you want to be at least a little leery of um, sort of opens it up for horses like Len Low Lady. Um, like you, I wasn't really taken with her race last time. Um, thought all in all, Lannery did the right thing. He followed the winner around the track, and then he just couldn't really make a race of it late, but she did improve a little bit. I really like Milfui's performance in the Demoiselle to close out her two-year-old campaign for Bill Mott. She pressed the pace. She took over the lead a half mile out, and it took a good horse in Malathot to run her down. We both liked her in the Devona Dale. Head into your formulator past performances. Watch the replay. You get both the pan and the head on. It looked like she was traveling sweetly entering the turn, and all of a sudden she got stuck in behind a dullard and was in behind a lot of traffic. My one concern after that, and you, that's enough of an excuse in all likelihood, she just didn't run after that. No, I, I agree with you, Dan. She didn't. She never recovered um, after she just got totally shuffled out of contention around the turn. To me, um, it was disappointing. It's enough of an excuse uh, for me to go back to her in this race, though. I mean, to me, there's just really nothing in here with Malathot not showing up. I think it opens things up for Milfuli to bounce back here. If she runs anything like she did in her final start as a two-year-old, I just think she's going to beat this one. First time, two turns for the seven competitive speed, a stakes winning sprinter who ran third and tried to make a long, prolonged, wide bid in the Devona Dale. She ran okay that day. She does have a little stamina on the bottom with mine shaft, but I have to admit, I'm not sure two turns will be her game down the road. Yeah, I worry about that too. Um, but all in all, she did run pretty well in Devona Dale last time. So if you wanted to go back to her here at another, what seems like another pretty good price, I'm not going to argue with you. Let's take a look at our top picks for the grade two Gulfstream Park Oaks. I have to admit, I had a very difficult time in this race. Uh, I think that Len Low Lady might actually work out a decent kind of stalking trip in here under Velasquez. I'm just looking for a price. I like the two Roman horses at prices, the five and the two. I think the two is a little bit better than she looks on paper. Milfui, though, you're right. If she runs her race two starts back, she's probably going to win. And if you get the price you get on the morning line of seven to two, you're supposed to send it in. Yeah, that, that's what I'll do. I don't know if she'll actually be 72 in your game, but if she is, I'm betting her. 6231 for Mike, 5236 for me. Grade two Gulfstream Park Oaks. It's your Kentucky Oaks prep on Florida Derby Saturday. Good luck.